What's hatching, y'all? I had enough fun last time opening up that welcome booster that it made me remember I used to do these kind of booster openings all the time. So you know what? I'm bringing it back. I'm doing boosted awareness, but now we're doing it over on this channel. So let's take a look at what this booster has to offer us. We got a set booster from Dominaire United starting out with the art. Oh, and we got a mountain running away. Look at that. So we've got the Bone Splinters artwork. I do absolutely love these art cards. First of all, they're great for drawing more attention to the artist, right? Like they got the artist's name down here. And you can put notes on the back if you want as well. Sometimes I write on the back of these when we use them for different purposes. But either way, these look absolutely gorgeous, right? Now, we have the mountain here at the beginning, which we can quickly kind of go by. It looks nice. It's a standardized kind of mountain range with the trees in front. It is an idyllic kind of view and belies the Phyrexian menace that lurks on Dominaria at the moment of this story, right? So you've got Battleish Sleeper here, which is a interesting Phyrexian human soldier concept. It's one white and one. It is three one. It's got a kicker of a black. Now, if you pay the kicker cost, then when he enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature. And the flavor text says, even he didn't know what he was until he felt his skin shifting and splitting, his mind overtaken by a chaos of whispers. Now, this is pretty wild because up until now, Phyrexian sleeper agents weren't aware they were Phyrexian sleeper agents, but they were created from birth in vats. Phyrexia has now found a way to complete people and turn them into sleeper agents when they already exist as regular people. It's a pretty wild concept. They can subvert individuals instead of just replacing them outright. So this right here represents the concept that you can put it out as a regular soldier. It's 3-1 and it does have the Phyrexian subtype, but it doesn't really matter. The black mana is where the Phyrexian aspect is kicking in. When you pay that kicker cost, all of a sudden, now the sleeper agent is activated and they go ahead and destroy one of your opponent's creatures. But at the same time, they've been revealed as a sleeper, right? So the idea is basically sleeper goes, I'm here for Phyrexia and ends up taking down some important unit at the same time that it loses its life, really? I mean, obviously, when it comes down to gameplay, it's not always going to be him and that you sacrifice and your opponent's not always going to sacrifice an amazing creature. But still, this does have a lot of fun flavor. And the idea that this stained glass warrior here, who was once a champion of Benalia, has now fallen. It's pretty neat, man. After that, we've got Talarian Geyser. It's one blue and two for a sorcery with a kicker of one white. Return target creature to its owner hand. Draw a card. If this spell was kicked, you gain three life. So three mana sorcery speed is pretty rough. And with the kicker, four mana sorcery speed is, uh, I mean, not the best from a gameplay standpoint. But from a flavor standpoint, this is pretty cool. You have a mage down on the water side and they're whipping up a massive amount of water into this like geyser whirlpool, which has grabbed a many-legged crab-looking Phyrexian menace that actually kind of has some Eldrazi vibes. And it's just whipping it right up into the air. Like you're just out of here. I'm not 100% sure exactly how the geyser would instill knowledge into you. I guess it's just, hey, we study at Teleria, so we just went ahead and infused the ability to gain knowledge from this. And the life gain part is the least understandable about it. What's he doing? Just kind of scooping handfuls of water into his mouth? Mm-mm. Phyrexian water. Delicious. So there is that. The flavor text says, if they don't drown, perhaps they'll rust. It's interesting because that's supposed to basically represent, like, if they're drowning or rusting, they're out of the battle for good. But this is a temporary removal, so eh, I don't know. I don't know, but the artwork's amazing. Then you've got Stall for Time. One white and two for an instant with a kicker of one blue and one. Tap up to two target creatures. If this spell was kicked... Put a stun counter on each of those creatures. Stun counters are funky because they just added them into the game with Dominaria United. And they changed the way that the whole untap mechanic works, essentially. I mean, not in the game overall. 
but in terms of blue spells that tap creatures down. They've had enchantments, you put it on a creature, that creature stays tapped unless you meet particular conditions, or just stays tapped down always. Now they've brought in this mechanic where you can temporarily use that effect. And honestly, stun counters feel like a very intuitive concept overall, so I like them as an addition. It adds more versatility. So you've got the artwork where you can literally see these two individuals stalling for time. They're casting some sort of ice magic or other kind of binding magic. It definitely looks like a big ring of ice, but I love the scale of the two little individuals with this massive Phyrexian horror in the middle. So you got him pinned down, stalling for time. We both know that this isn't going to do much. I do kind of wish that it was targeting two creatures in the artwork, but it says up to two creatures, so it's not like this couldn't be cast under these conditions. So solid overall flavor-wise. Then we've got Voda Sea Scavenger. One blue and two for a 3-2 Merfolk Rogue with Domain. And when it enters the battlefield, look at the top X of your library, where X is the number of basic land types you have. So this is just basically a scavenger who's going around, seeing what they can dig up afterwards. I mean, Vidalia is probably not doing too well at the current point, especially with Phyrexia having infiltrated. So at this point, you have to go wherever you can to find anything that might help, right? At this point, you've got the situation where whatever little bobble he's found, maybe the tiny little artifact you find buried in the sea will help you win the war, right? After that, we've got... Hero's Heirloom, two mana artifact, equipped creature gets plus two plus one. As long as it's equipped and is legendary, it has trample and haste. So the creature is legendary, it gets trample and haste, and any creature gets plus two plus one. It is pretty underwhelming from a mechanical standpoint, admittedly. It is all right, though, from an artwork standpoint. I really am a fan of the stained glass. And this statue that's in front of a stained glass window holding up this blade, like for real, the artwork is so much better than the actual card itself that when you look at that blade, you go, man, it should do so much more. But if you really boil it down and think about it, a lot of humans, if you or I were creatures in magic, we'd probably be one once. And so when you think about adding plus two, plus one, all of a sudden you go, wait a minute, I'm as strong as an elephant. That's pretty crazy. So, you know, there is that power level that comes along with it. Then we've got Jin of the Fountain. It's a six mana four, four flyer. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, you get to either get plus one, plus one to him till the end of turn. You can exile him and return him to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step, or you can scry one. So from a mechanical standpoint, this is another one where you go, okay, you know what? Those are some more right options, but ultimately you're just going to find this in people's like draft and limited environments, unless somebody's a huge gin fan. But from a flavor perspective, this is incredibly epic. You find the gin that is linked to this fountain. We're not talking about a lamp. You've got the full-on fountain, and you can see the gin kind of forming up out of the top of it, and the water dripping off the side, and you've got the rich blue of the artwork, and the red that represents the hair, and that is just standing out so well against the black darkened sky. I love this artwork so much. It is really good. Then we've got Elvish Hydromancer. One green and two for an elf wizard. Kicker for four, one of those is blue. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, create a token that's a copy of target creature you control. And the flavor text says, water remembers every living thing it has ever been a part of. We need only bring that recollection, recollection to the surface. Now this is an excellent concept for a green-blue overlap. Green and blue are enemy colors, so you don't normally get to see this happen too frequently, but this is an amazing little flavor mesh where you have the Hydromancer who can essentially copy any being, right? As long as like water has flowed through that being and virtually every, well, essentially every living being requires water. I, we're talking about the magical multiverse. So I suppose that's a little bit of a generalization, but ultimately that flavor tech concept is really cool because water certainly does flow through us in a number of ways, right? You've got sweat, tears, all kinds of different ways that water is going to fly out of your body. So in that case, you know, you're going to constantly have this cycle and it's going to flow through all of life. So being able to pull that magically into a full formed being is really sweet.
And the artwork looks great, too. I mean, you, at first when you look at it, you go, wait, it's just an elf in front of a drake or something. What's the deal? And then you realize, wait a minute, it's actually forming up out of the water. Like, she's standing here on this little branch. Well, actually, it's a pretty big log. That's going across the water. The water is rising up and turning into a perfect drake. But you can see the wingtips here are still water. And you might actually feel mist as it flew by. This is really cool artwork and a very fun concept. The idea, elves have that tied into nature, life magic. But water, the blue magic, is normally anathema to them. So instead turning around and taking the copying magic through that natural life essence concept is a really fun idea. Then we've got uh, Volhar the Vidalian Desecrator. One black and one blue for a one-two legendary Phyrexian merfolk wizard. See, is what I was talking about. The Phyrexians got him. Tap him, draw a card, then discard a card. If you discarded an instant or sorcery card this way, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Two mana, sacrifice him. You can cast an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard this turn. If that spell will be cast, uh, if we we'll go to the graveyard, I should say, then you exile it instead. So this is a pretty solid card overall. I guess the idea with the first ability is supposed to be Vohar is just... He's, he's infiltrated, he's causing all kinds of havoc, he's desecrating things that are sacred to the Vidalians, causing, you know, damage to their society, and then you can sacrifice him, which would be activating him, basically, as a sleeper, and then he goes ahead and, like, reveals himself and takes, basically, takes himself down to cast whatever magic you need, right? I mean, that's a pretty funky concept, and the artwork is wild like look at him he's this crazy merfolk but you can see the top half of him is clearly phyrexianized and then you've got these fish that are floating around him and some of them are all glowing the same way that his spear tip is glowing it just makes you wonder what he's fully capable of why would you want to make him sacrifice himself phyrexia is vicious then we've got lagomo's hand of hatred so he is one red one black and one for a one three legendary human shaman at the beginning of combat on your turn, you create a 2-1 red elemental creature token with Trample and Haste. Sack it at the beginning of the next end step. So he just generates a token every turn. That's pretty good. Tap him, search your library for a guard, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Activate only if five or more creatures died this turn. So that's a bonkers ability. Just being able to tap and search your library for anything you want is crazy. But having to have five creatures go to the graveyard is also a massive restriction. That is a big hurdle to jump over so that makes him a fun build around concept in the first place and then you have the idea behind him i guess is that he's just constantly summoning up these fire elementals and just flinging them at people i don't know what the idea fully is supposed to be he's got these elementals and then somehow if there's enough death energy he can literally use that to maybe summon up a demon and then that demon will be the one who fulfills your wish by getting you whatever card you want like that is some epic flavor. Like, look, it looks like he's got chained demons up, man. Are those supposed to be the elementals? Or are those what get freed when a bunch of creatures die? And there's, oh, there's volcanoes exploding in the back and chains whipping all around them. This artwork just gets crazier and crazier the more I look at it. This is like a death metal album cover, bro. This is intense. All the ladies want the Legomos. Yo, Legomos. Let me feel that hand of hatred. They say ladies like a man with a slow hand. No, ladies like Legomos and his hand of hatred, son. That'll give you the mega shaka. All right, then we got, hey, it's the Raven Man. I'm the Raving Man. This is the Raven Man. Nice, dude. This is awesome. This is legit going straight into my cube, man. One black and one, legendary human wizard. At the beginning of each end step, if a player discarded a card this turn, create a 1-1 one, one Blackbird creature token with flying, and this creature can't block. One black and three, tap them. Each opponent discards a card. Activate only as a sorcery. I love this man. He summons up ravens. This is Lim Duel. We finally got to learn who the raven man was. Turns out it's Lim Duel. He makes the bird tokens. He works like a disrupting scepter, knocking nonsense out of your opponent's hands. It's great and he looks so intimidating with his glowing golden eyes in front of this tree crowded with ravens and actually they covered him uh, recently in a story from dominary united that was pretty epic as well so i'm super happy to see this this is a sweet score and it will be going straight into my cube 
Then we got Viachino Branch Rider. One red for a 1-1 one, one Viachino Warrior with kicker one green and two. It's got haste. If it was kicked, it enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it. And for one red and two, it gets plus two plus zero until end of turn. So this is a guy who rides branches on a, <laughs> on a wooden surfboard. Cowabunga, bros! Surf's up, bro! So I guess the plus two plus one plus one counters, are you giving him a surfboard? Like, let's go! And then he can pump. I will admit, I don't know how speeding along, like, is he speeding straight down a tree or across a tree? How does this work? This one is confusing from a flavor perspective. All right, so let's move on. We have, oh, no list card. We have a token that is, whoa, look at that dragon. Its wings are on fire. It's flaming wings, man. Mega epic. Flaming wings contrasted against massively cold mountain peaks. That's insane. Imagine what would happen if that dragon flew directly above the mountain peaks and the snows just kind of started to melt and mist and sizzle. That would be really awesome, man. And look at its trailing smoke. This is such an epic looking dragon. That's awesome. This was a great pack. So, Boosted Awareness is back. You can check out the playlist of it. I'll keep adding videos as we make them. Thanks for coming by. See you next time.